प्रसार भारती अभिलेखा गार की प्रस्तुति सदा बहार सुनहरे दौर का अनमोल खजाना Nineteen thirty-eight. This was the silver jubilee year of the Indian cinema, and it was certainly a moment to cherish. From the silent mythological Raja Harish Chandra in nineteen thirteen to the rebellious Tyagabhumi in nineteen thirty-eight, Indian cinema had certainly come a very long way. The tenets and values that Raja Harish Chandra maintained in terms of its attitude to spirituality, patriarchal leadership. charitable attitude towards the untouchables and so on and so forth continued in the same vein with tyagabhumi despite similarities and differences we will be seeing that indian cinema goes through a major change very soon after the second world war and in this episode we shall look at exactly these changes we are here on the hill top behind the prabhat film studios and this hilltop served as exterior locations for most of prabhat studio films undoubtedly one could see the growth of a very organized film industry with production studios and houses coming up all over the country in calcutta we already had the new theaters in the 1932 rl khemka set up the east india film company along with arora film studios these studios not only serviced bengali and assamese films but they were also responsible for the production of hundreds of tamil and telugu films down from the south in bombay we see the setting up of the wadia movie tone studios and these studios produced a brilliant character in the form of nadia the hunter wali the fearless indomitable nadia ye kya hai hunter aur mai Chandulal and Gohar set up the Ranjit Studios to produce comedy social films. This studio which languishes for want of proper care and patronage like many others had over 300 artists and technicians on their payroll to make films in Hindi, Punjabi and Gujarati. Others to start were Sharda Film Company, Bharat Movie Tone, Saraswati Cine Tone and Krishna Tone. In Madras The movement was led by the nationalist K Subramaniam. He established the Madras United Artists Corporation with 200 artists and 22 musicians on their payroll. Of course, the uncrowned monarch of the Tamil filmdom was S S Vasan. He set up the Gemini Studios and produced Chandralekha, which remains till this day one of the greatest spectaculars ever made in India. Indian cinema was also to recognize and pay tributes to the independence movement although mixed with a touch of entertainment films like nami river did include an obligatory freedom song like this one from the poems of mahakavi subramanya bharati Mureche, 
We are here in the Bun Gardens, and this is where Mahatma Gandhi conducted several discussions on the freedom movement for India. The independence movement was to influence the way stories were written for films. Some films were influenced directly, but most films use the theme of the independence movement like a bit of spice, an obligatory salute to an event few Indians could turn a blind eye to in those days. Those were the days when films were brimming with confidence and an attitude of positive spirit. It is indeed difficult to list all the films that portrayed the spirit of positive action. But three films stand out unique. And these three came from absolutely different backgrounds. The first of these films was made in this very city of Pune. It was called Kunku in Marathi and Dunya Namane in Hindi. This film was made by the indomitable V. Shantaram in 1937. It portrays the way society tramples on the woman's right to choose her life partner. Dunya Namane is a bold portrayal of a woman who is forced into marrying an old widower. मंजे आपण वकील आहात बर मग न्याय अन्याय आपल्याला कळतो माझ्या संतापाचं कारण आपण ओळखलं मी इतकी का चिडले असं आपल्याला वाटत त्याची पंचायत मी करीत नाही मला एवढं कळत की हे घर माझं आहे या घराचा मी मालक आहे इथे साऱ्या गोष्टी माझ्या मर्जी प्रमाणात झाल्या पाहिजे माझ्या बाबतीत ते शक्य नाही पण मी ते चालू देणार नाही मेलेलं कोंबड आगीला भीत नाही मी वाटेल तेवढं दुःख सहन करेन पण अन्याय मुळीच सहन करणार नाही काय काय असा अन्याय झाला हो तुमच्याशी अन्याय तुम्ही या वयात माझ्यासारख्या मुलीशी लग्न केलं हा न्याय वाटतो तुम्हाला आता मला माझ्या सुखाची पर्वा नाही पण ज्यांनी माझ्याशी अन्याय केला आहे त्यांना मात्र मी मुळीच सुख लाभू देणार नाही बर बर पाहू काय होत ते मी तुम्हाला आणखी एक संधी देतो नीट विचार करा संसारात साऱ्याच गोष्टी माणसाच्या मनाप्रमाणे होत नसतात मग झाल्या गोष्टीची चीड मनात धरून संबंध आयुष्य दुःखात काढण्यात काय शहाणपणा खरोखर किती चांगलं बोलात यावेळी मी तुमची मुलगी आणि तुम्ही माझे वडील असता तर किती बर झालं असत मी तुमचे पाय धरून तुमचा आशीर्वाद मागितला असता बर बर उगीच बडबडू नका काहीतरी यु सी इन गुड ओल्ड डेज वेन दिस पीपल युज टू प्रोड्यूस द फिल्म दे आर ऑल कॉन्सन्ट्रेटिंग ऑन द फिल्म विच दे आर मेकिंग literally for all 24 hours they would have nothing in their head and mind except the film which they are making and that dedication and teamwork that led to the uh, that led for making such memorial and good films secondly they always thought that they owe something to the society they through the film they should have some new thing before society the third example is more a direct statement 
based on the independence movement in India. This film was made by K. Subramaniam in 1939 and it was called Tyagabhumi. This film figured the great classical singer Papanasam Sivan who plays a Gandhi prototype and fights for the rights of the untouchables in those days who were not allowed to enter the temples of India. These three films attained significance because they picked up social issues which concerned India very directly in those days and at the same time they were also scripted within a melodramatic format and it was for this reason that they were great hits in spite of the fact that they did not have prominent stars and because they were big hits maybe the film critics did not take them too seriously well these films continue to remain unforgettable landmarks after the second world war and the independence struggle comes a different contrapuntal face to the euphoric nationalist Indian cinema. But in course of time, the whole system has changed. After the partition, the independent producers have started. The institutions which were there are no more. Those actors, when they were no studios left to make films, naturally they started moving about with other producers. The other producers who came from outside or independent producers, they approached them and they started paying them and that way this thing started. The quality of Indian cinema suddenly changed volte face and the new offsprings reflected a kind of liberation, both sensuous and intellectual. It would be cruel to say that these forces were responsible for the destruction of the studio system per se. But one has to accept the changes as part of any inevitable historical change. I am a social being, yes. And society is uh, conditioned by politics also. Yes, I am politically minded also. But at the same time, you see, I want to escape at times into something, when you see, which is uh, fanciful, which is fascinating, which is dreamlike. Uh, and uh, being a social being, uh, you can't uh, say that you have no business to dream. <laughs> Even audiences went crazy watching their new non-studio film stars. Just like the fact that they were also overawed because they were now an independent people. Was there a connection between the two? Possibly, yes. All said and done, post-1947 independent cinema was a different kind of cinema. The star system came to stay and the Hindi cinema saw the emergence of stars like Devanand, Raj Kapoor and Dilip Kumar. Among actresses, one saw the starry presence of Nargis and Madhubala in the Hindi cinema, Anjali Devi Banumati in the Telugu cinema, and Padmini Savitri and Vaijanti Mala in the Tamil cinema. 
This galaxy of stars continued to shine till almost the mid 80s for a full four decades. Unbelievable. Such a phenomenon cannot be observed in any film industry in any part of the world. And some of the artists from the south even had very strong political party leanings and they used their presence on the screen very effectively. Another important contributing factor was the gramophone record. The gramophone player was not a rich man's toy anymore and the songs from these films which came on the gramophone records was a very important factor for the promotion of their films. Golden voices like Lata Mangeshkar, P. Sushila and S. Janaki among the female singers and in the male singers we had the brilliant Mohammad Rafi, Hemant Kumar, Mukesh, Sirgari Govindarajan, T.M. Saundarajan, Talat Mahmood. These singing stars developed a kind of fan following which was unprecedented in any part of the world. This period also saw the rise of several film theatres all over the country and a sudden growth in the regional language films. With this, we see an irreversible status in the growth of the star system both on the visual screen and on the audio record. Quite within the ambit of the consumerist growth pattern, these new film stars cut out very definite kind of roles for themselves. They forced filmmakers and producers to accept them within certain stereotypes along with their own patented hairstyles, dress designs, dialogue delivery styles, etc, etc. All in the name of the audience wanted, so let's give it to them. But the mid 50s, especially 1956, saw another major phenomenon occurring and yet again from the city of Calcutta. It was in a film called Phater Panchali, directed by the great master Satyajit Ray. But more about him and his films in another episode. Till then, goodbye.